Chapter 2, <clears throat> A Formula for Driving Far and Fast, Success Leaves Clues, Jim Rowan. I'm one of those individuals who knew early in life that if you learn from successful people and if you do what they did, you would get what they got. Even as a mechanic, I realized that there were other mechanics earning more than me because they could do the work better and faster. I also knew I could learn from them and improve my skills and wages. But as adults, we can be so competitive and proud. It really takes something to humble ourselves and learn from someone else. For me, that something was massive career and financial failure resulting from my accident. The remarkable thing is this. Once you humble yourself and seek help, there are so many people, successful people, willing to help and guide you. While I was recovering from surgery after my accident, one of Roger Penske's employees, Jerry Miller, called to ask how I was doing. Shortly after that conversation, he came to visit and brought me a book. He said it was a gift from Roger Penske and that Mr. Penske wanted me to know it could change my life. It was the same book that Mr. Gould held up in his presentation and declared it contained the best kept secrets of the rich. The book was Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Besides my accident and subsequent financial woes, this book did more than anything else to prepare me to be open to opportunity. It's a simple book. And yet from the first chapter of Think and Grow Rich, I found the insights and inspiration to achieve my first goal in business, earning $10,000 in one month. Please understand that the insights I share here are only the tip of the iceberg of the wisdom contained in Napoleon Hill's masterpiece. If reading my book could inspire you to study and apply the principles in Think and Grow Rich, I would consider it a tremendous success. Crisis to Increases the first thing I learned from Think and Grow Rich was that adversity, even failure, could open the doors to greater success. As I began my career as an auto mechanic, I had certain pictures in my imagination of how it would look to achieve my goals. I imagined that the corporate leaders would recognize my hard work and I would start receiving promotions and raises. After my accident, those pictures seemed unattainable. Like many, I believed my education, talents, upbringing, and connections defined and limited my career choices. I never imagined the possibility of being a successful entrepreneur. It didn't match the pictures in my mind and how my career would develop. As I started reading Think and Grow Rich, I began to realize those pictures were only a means to an end. There were one possible path to achieving my real dreams, which included providing a lifestyle for my family and enjoying some expensive hobbies, such as car racing with my sons. Napoleon Hill really caught my attention when he pointed out that many successful people got started after facing crisis, some crisis. The turning point in the lives of those who succeed usually come in the moment of some crisis, though which they are introduced to their other selves, which is in page 36 of Think and Grow Rich. Page numbers in are referring to the pages in the Think and Grow Rich book. I had no idea what he meant by other selves, but I began to see that other paths could lead me to my dreams. Paths such as owning my own business would enable me to achieve my dreams faster and with greater satisfaction. In time, I would meet my other self and realize the greatest rewards of this journey would be found not in the wealth I acquired, but in the person I discovered myself to be in that process. 
The idea for Think and Grow Rich came from industrialist turned philanthropist Andrew Carnegie. While most people seem to believe that success depends on luck and circumstances, Carnegie believed that there was a pattern to the qualities and behaviors of those who could be studied and learned. So he challenged Napoleon Hill to interview and observe successful people and write a book based on his research. It took Hill two decades and thousands of interviews with 500 of the most successful people in his day to produce Think and Grow Rich. The central insight that Napoleon Hill discovered was deceptively simple. A person's thoughts determine the results they experience, page 248. The most famous quote from Napoleon Hill summarizes this philosophy. Whatever the mind of man can conceive and believe, it can achieve all the right parts. As, it, as I began to read Hill's book, I looked at it from the perspective of a car mechanic, like a repair manual. Think and Grow Rich seemed to offer clear instructions and diagrams for putting together the vehicle that would enable me to reach my desired destination. Within the first few chapters, I had discovered a parts list for Hill's formula for success. Hill described the first necessary part as a definite purpose. It seemed to me that I had a definite purpose. I wanted to provide a comfortable lifestyle for my family and never have to worry about money again. As I continued to read Think and Grow Rich, it became obvious that my purpose needed some clarification, but I had made a good start. Hill emphasized that a clear purpose was not enough to achieve success. It required a second part, a burning desire to achieve that purpose. Hill wrote, stand by that purpose until it has become an all-consuming obsession. Page 17. My desire became an obsession the day my son asked why I parked the car blocks from our home. It burned white hot within me. Next, he'll advise that one's purpose and desire must become translated into specific plans for their fulfillment. I was at a loss. I had no other plans behind beyond <clears throat> working hard at my chosen trade. As an auto mechanic, I never had a plan B. Almost like Napoleon Hill knew my situation, Think and Grow Rich offered encouraging advice and clear steps to develop viable plans to achieve my dreams. Hill suggested borrowing ideas and plans from other people who have already achieved success. That was reassuring because I wasn't sure how I would devise a personal success plan. He further encouraged me with the thought that someone with a definite purpose and burning desire will attract viable plans, as well as helpful people and resources. This would prove true in my case. Once plans were established to achieve one's purpose, Hill's formula called for determination to stand by that desire until one realized it on page 18. The fourth essential part, which appears outwardly as persistence or determination, expresses an inner faith or belief. Hill declared that if one is willing to stake his entire future on a single turn of the wheel in order to get it, he is sure to win. Page 16. At the core of Think and Grow Rich Success Formula was a part I knew I didn't have. Hill wrote, the object of this book is to help all who seek it to learn the art of changing their minds from failure consciousness to success consciousness, page 24. Quoting the famous poem Invictus by William Ernest Henley, Hill summed up the essence of his philosophy. We are the masters of our fate, the captains of our souls. 
because we have the power to control our thoughts. Page 25. Though I still had lots of doubts, fears, and insecurities, somehow I had faith that it could develop that success consciousness with help from this book. Maybe my faith was strengthened because of how well Hill's research was documented. The names of many of the famous and successful individuals who were interviewed by Hill are listed on the front of this book. Maybe the strong recommendation for the book by billionaire Roger Penske gave me faith, the faith I needed to study and follow through with determination. Something gave me faith that Hill's ideas could change my thinking and my life. So I studied it like it was a manual for my favorite car. As I read, my faith grew and my success consciousness developed. Eventually, I knew that Hill was writing about me. I could see myself following his formula and achieving my dreams. Every human being who reaches the age of understanding of the purpose of money wishes for it. Wishing will not bring riches, but desiring riches with a state of mind that becomes an obsession, then planning definite ways and means to acquire riches and backing those plans with persistence, which does not recognize failure, will bring riches. Page 31. When I got to this point in reading Thick and Grow Rich, I had Hill's formula in my notes like a checklist of necessary parts. I knew I had three of the five essential parts, and I was on the hunt for the two parts I still lacked. So my parts list looked like this. First one was definite purpose. I had that one checked. Next one was desire as an all-consuming obsession. I had that one checked. Next one, clear plans to fulfill one's definite purpose. That one was not checked. The next one, determination, persistence that doesn't recognize failure, a.k.a. faith and belief. I had a check mark there. The last one was success consciousness. My check mark is not there yet. You can think of these parts of the formula as answering different questions about your dream. The aspect of purpose answers the question, what? What is your dream? What will it look like and feel like when it is fulfilled? The aspect of desire answers the question, why? Why do you want to accomplish this? What or who provides your motivation? The aspect of clear plans answers the question, how? How will you get from here to there? How will you fund your dream? How will you staff it? How will you learn all you need to know to accomplish your dream? The how question had me stumped, but not stopped. Think and Grow Rich expanded my vision, so I began to explore paths and options I hadn't previously considered. I bought some business magazines and looked into franchises and other opportunities. The price tags for most of these opportunities frightened me. Nevertheless, one of Napoleon Hill's key insights about successful people was that they found ways to build their dream using other people's resources, other people's money, their ideas, their efforts. And I also didn't think I had the skills or education to succeed at business. Again, Hill gave reassurance that all the skills and education could, could be acquired through other people. As I read Think and Grow Rich, I became convinced that I had the critical parts of the formula to draw from other parts to me. I had a clear purpose and a burning desire. That faithful drive home with my son gave me the determination to give it my all and never quit until I achieved my desired success. Almost immediately, 
I was presented with an achievable plan and a mentor to help me execute my plan and develop my success consciousness. The critical pieces were falling into place. Buckle up, this could be a bumpy ride. Though I quickly had a taste of success, please don't get the idea that it was all smooth sailing. Hill took Keynes to make it clear that every one of the successful people he interviewed faced their share of trials along the way. The same was true for me, and I guarantee it will be the same for you. If you thought of your life as a roller coaster ride before you started a new venture, don't expect this to change. If anything, it will get worse. What you want now are some new approaches for dealing powerfully with all those bumps and turns. Fortunately for us, success leaves clues, and so does failure. Entrepreneur and motivational speaker Jim Rohn used to say, don't ask that things will get easier, ask that you will get better. Learn from every experience. When you face turbulent winds, let them lift you up. As Napoleon Hill wrote, every adversity brings with it the seed of equivalent advantage. Seen this way, it all serves to fulfill your desired purpose. Questions for reflection, discussion, and action. Number one, who have you learned the most from in your life and career? Number two, the adversity of failure ever opened doors to greater success in your life? Has that happened? Number three, if Napoleon Hill's theory is correct, that a person's thoughts determine the results they experience, what have you been thinking? And number four, read over the parts list in this chapter. Which parts of this success formula do you have? And which do you need to find or develop? Speculate on what your definite purpose might be.